fighting. Guys, okay. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Yeah, it's looking at that flash, it's looking at that flash. Penta? Penta? Yeah, Penta, Penta. Penta, Penta. Penta, Penta. Penta, Penta. You hit these. Nice, nice, nice. Nice. Wow, Penta kill. The tower only has one hit, but they don't even need it. There's the Encore coming out there from Ayla, trying to actually root him up. Not going to be able to do so, but Dopla is going to fall. No way out for him. Energy are gone, 100 Thieves. I didn't get through it, guys. No, he did, he did. I want to kick some other guys. Just kill, kill Ari, kill Tall Taker. Look at me. Oh. 1.1k AP. Uh. Uh. The second charge here. Oh my oh. god! Trick King River, my man is nasty! Uh, can we fight? Can we fight? Yeah, yeah, fight, fight, fight. We should, we should, we should. Look at Nathan. Bass, Oriana no ulti. Oriana no ulti. Paris, no flash. Renekton? Holy crap, cut. And Sniper is there to finish him off. Sniper low in health. Pathmaker forward, gonna be able to flip back one. Meech is down. It's up to FBI though. Quinn is piling through. The resets are here. He's going forward. There's a flash. He gets three. Quinn immediately into the stasis, but Palafox in trouble as well. Quinn is down. FBI takes him out. But it's River who gets the resets. Can River do anything on the other side? He's down as well. Energy have won the fight. Maybe look Nautilus? Look me. I've yep. look his area. Is there in a the flash? Yeah, kill Talia. Nice, guys. Give me Penta. Nice. Wait, Penta, Penta? Oh, Penta? Red, red, Penta. Penta, 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 I'm a professional liar myself. Welcome back to the LCS. <laughs> Welcome to Andy. What did you say, Raz? Nothing. He said he's a liar. I'm a professional liar myself. Professional liar. Professional he liar, Raz yeah. Mall. You need me to manipulate someone. <laughs> Well, if you're upfront about it and you're already telling them that yes. you're a liar, you're not going to be or able to manipulate them. But if I'm truthful about being lying, then maybe I'm not. Wow. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. All right, Kobe, My welcome. game's Rez. Thank you. How, how are you? Uh, I'm good, uh, except that I think you put something weird in the coffee. So today. I put nothing weird in the coffee. You found a nearly empty <laughs> jar of coffee in the fridge and were like, yep, this is the one for me. And then you're like, hey, it tastes weird. <laughs> if, if I don't show up next weekend, We'll Jack know why. Me. Oh. <laughs> I'm still going to drink it, though. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're off to a great start. So, uh, Zven is joining the cast today. Yes. Yep. So, we got Let's Zven, go. Captain Flowers, and Azale. That'll Woo! be the cast later. Which means Kobe's with us all day, pending the coffee reaction. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you think of the series yesterday? That was quite the banger. We've had back-to-back -back bangers. The, uh, the series before that, the series yesterday, let's go full five games, Baron steals, team fights all the time, setting kill records. I'm having a blast. Why do you think the series are so close? Because everyone's already been talking about this whole split how close the LCS has become, how competitive mm -hmm. has become. Um, you know, really the floor raised on a lot of these teams, and it's providing some really exciting playoffs. Yeah, I think uh, you're right on that one. I also think that uh, Fudge mentioned how it's so much easier going into playoffs, and you're focusing on one opponent, you're focusing on one patch, mm -hmm. and of course it is, it's a, a best of, so it's a lot more, um, I would say, easier for the players to kind of take on the games. There's not a lot of random factors or matchups that you're dealing with, so that's a definite factor for, for sure. Yeah, I think it's, as you say, an extension of the parity that we've seen mm -hmm. in the LCS so far, and I'm pretty happy that it extended towards playoffs. I'm Pretty, like, 100 Thieves was such a big story. It would have been super tragic to me if in three days their 10 and 4 turned into big. Oh, my yeah. goodness. I know. The bottom half. Either way, we were going to lose a team yesterday with Energy being the defending champs now out early or 100 Thieves being mm -hmm. the second place team out early. So, either For, way, you yeah. could say, like, I'm really happy they made it through. Yeah. I'm obviously sad the other team missed it. But it would have been such a sad story if all of this hard work that 100 Thieves had had built up, all yeah. this goodwill, yeah. yeah. and you know, the, the rookies doing so well, overperforming and getting first place and um, multiple times throughout the split um, had, had all been kind of washed away by getting defeated and uh, eliminated. 
so early. So, yeah, I was super glad to see them push through, especially because they do have so many young guys on the team, too. You know, you yeah. get a lot of a lot of experience there up on the big stage in front of the big crowd. Emily, you were talking about when you were interviewing Quid. He was really nervous yeah. in the interview in front of the crowd. And he, to be able to get that public, uh, you know, speaking going as well. Yeah, it was great to see Quid and River afterwards. They were in really good mood, especially... Those two, I think, are really the the core of this team, right? Yeah. And so mm -hmm. they both popped off in the series. But yeah, quit turning his hands or she is shaking. <laughs> um, I think uh, not only because of like being on stage for the interview, but just adrenaline after playing such an insane best of five. What about the rest of the playoffs so far? What has stood out to you, Emily? Coach Cam, I love the Coach Cam's back. That's my favorite. Some of my favorite moments from the playoffs thus far. Uh, as we see some reactions <laughs> oh, from yeah. yesterday, have been coaches either absolutely just <laughs> no! what their team is doing, <laughs> yeah. or yeah, Spooks in particular. I know uh, <laughs> we, we've been talking about uh, LEC Coach Cam for a while, but yeah, as we see 100 Thieves oh, coaching man. staff popping up, I love seeing Coach Cam because that's also sometimes us too behind the scenes where. We'll be sitting watching the game and we'll just be like, oh, my God, just have like a really over the top reaction. Mm -hmm, Obviously, yeah. these coaches are so invested in kind of bringing their players. But yeah. then when it's out of your hands because you're not actually playing, you're just watching them. And I've loved the reactions we've seen thus yeah. far. And, and so many of those coaches from yesterday also are former players. Yep. So, you know, they, they really wish they could be hands on and you just see the natural reactions. They're so genuine. Yeah, it I remember. Sucks. I, I, yes. <laughs> it sucks. I was talking to Spooks after. After the game, he was like, yeah, I'm just drained. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For me, in terms of what stood out to me about the playoffs or, like, surprised me was the way Cloud9 just ignored the regular season. Uh -huh. Yeah. And we're still really good. Like, the difference between their regular season just mediocrity and then their dominance <laughs> in the three games they played, they were never behind against 100 Thieves. And that plus 3,200 average gold difference at 14 yeah. across the 100 Thieves series is absurd. It's they, they won all of their games basically in the first 14 minutes. And it with as well with like how close the other series were that you mentioned, Kobe, Team Liquid, FlyQuest going to Hey, he's things. looking like him to me. Hey, <laughs> he's looking hey. like him to me. That guy on the left looks pretty good too. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> A I lot mean, more confident than the guy on the right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I just think uh, Cloud9 showing up is a, like a, actually a little bit surprising yeah. because it's very rare that teams <laughs> actually... It is. It's so rare that you have the bad regular season and are able to turn it on. Energy was unable to turn it's, it on. Yeah. So it did. It's really funny to me because the whole story of is Cloud9 back yeah. has been like a meme this whole split because yeah, yeah. they have been back but then they've been gone again they were good for a week <laughs> yeah and then the rest of the split like are they back to that one week but this is the first <laughs> time where i was like whoa they're actually back because yeah. it wasn't just jojo that was back the, yeah. the whole team was playing so much better so definitely agree with you there as for me i already talked about loving the five game series both yes. both series that i cast went a full distance yeah uh, super exciting of course especially when you have so many kills you know we're, we're setting combined kill records uh so far in playoffs mm -hmm. but i would say most exciting individual moments these baron steals give me yes. some more give El me some more baron yeah. steals that's a big reason why we're going full five games yeah the fact that contracts is one Baron steal away from tying X Smithy's record. Gonna have to wait a long really time fun. to get that record, though. Now they're out. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Gotta wait until summer. <laughs> Tragic. Actually, like I love that you mentioned moments because when we were served this question, it was about moments throughout the playoffs. Because yes, a lot of these game fives had some crazy, like, oh, could this be the end of the game? No, it goes to the next team fight. And for me, yeah. it was around General Umpty. Umpty when he was on his Lee Sid was a machine and there was one team fight which really oh, felt, yep. felt like it triggered the oh, this was so good. win for Team Liquid. Woo. Woo. Huge ulti onto Masu, served into a Rel ulti, served into a Ziggs ulti. Like that was a game winning team fight and it showcased how damn good Umpty is in critical moments like these. Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely, Umpty has played exactly the same way as he did in LCK, mm. but that means that you do like for every kind of low light where he's like invading and maybe his lanes don't have pressure, you get insane moments like this, especially on Lee Sin, which is a pick that's rising in popularity, not only in this series, but then we saw it again yeah. yesterday yeah. become a huge point of contention between River and Contracts. Yeah, and Team Liquid was really 
close to actually beating FlyQuest because that yep. series was also just two days ago. So we have some highlights from that series. Team Liquid was one game away from skipping today and yep. going all the way to Saturday in the winner's bracket final, but uh, narrowly losing this series. Jensen. Jensen, Jensen, Jensen. He was good. Pretty, pretty big monster, honestly, for this whole series. He's on a warpath on Twitter as well, if you have. Oh, yes. he's yes. actually, he's undefeated. His KDA on Twitter is is immaculate. Yesterday, right he necroed a tweet from, like, January where Think yes. Hard. Yeah, and it was perfect. He's done that before in the past, too. Jensen was... remembers. He always remembers. So the one that he did after this Team Liquid game was really funny <laughs> because TL, the week before, put out a content piece about can a gold player survive an LCS game? And they yeah. had an actual gold player play with yeah. their LCS team. Yeah. And then Jensen retweeted it with, I guess not. I after can't he, believe it. After he oh, smurfed yeah. on APA, I was like, holy, that that was that was a massive clap. But I will say big stuff for uh for TL as well in that series. Jan was looking was really, really good, yeah. good to me. So I think the bottom lane for this matchup is going to be super hype. Just real quick, speaking of Twitter, APA is taking a vow of silence today. <laughs> so he claims. No! I, th I say no. There were people that this was actually triggering, though, so I am curious what chat's opinion of it is, if they're happy or sad about hearing the news that APA is uh -huh. claiming to take a vow of silence. I kind Where's of their feel content? Like, I kind of feel like he's not. So I understand a lot of the people that are pretty negative on this because they're, they're, they're just jumping on the bandwagon. They're like, oh man, I'm so triggered because I've been in games where this trash player is talking so is talking so much, right? So they're like, stop yapping. Yeah. But for me, I appreciate what APA is doing so much for the entertainment of the league. Mm -hmm. Yes, it takes a lot to be be the villain, and he embraced being the villain. He's he willingly is going in there, you know, trash talking all these popular players, so they can get more content, so it can be more hype. And I I definitely appreciate uh, you know the entertainment factor. And I know. <laughs> When I've been in those games where the enemy team is talking trash and you're uh -huh. like, I, those are the more, most fun games for me. Those are the games that I'm really invested in. Because then it feels better when yes. you get the clap back. Yes! Exactly. <laughs> yes! And, like, and for the Entertainment League, that entire series uh, uh, that we had where we were just showing the all chat was so fun. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I hope he isn't. I, I hope yeah. he's lying to us. I, yeah. I, I, feel, I feel bad for the backlash that he was getting. but mm. um, Instigator yeah. says that he wants drama, which is perfect <laughs> yeah, for a name. So go. I appreciate you in the chat <laughs> yeah. for saying that. Yeah, wow. What a great chat name for what they said. <laughs> People are saying boo. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I think the other thing that was only weird to me, because I thought APA was really well known for this, but I guess not, because mm -hmm. people were like, oh, he's just playing it up for LCS. No, he's been doing this since tier three. Like, yeah. this yeah. has always been part of his personality, so it's very natural uh, for him. This is not an act. It's something he's been doing since he started playing League of Legends. And in person, he's a super nice guy. And I yeah. would also say, I would <laughs> also true. say, though, the mental game for League, he actually got in Jensen's head that second game. Yeah. Like, it worked. They said all five people bought. Yeah, it, it literally, <laughs> it literally <laughs> worked. He, he got in Jensen's head yeah. and then pretty sure that uh, FlyQuest then just had Jensen have to mute all. APA yeah. so. Chat, my goat, don't do this to us. Yeah, Chad is unanimously nearly unanimously uh, booing the fact that he said he's silencing himself. I hope it's just a fake out and he types anyway, because weirdly enough, like every player doesn't mute him. Some of them are like, oh, I think it's funny, but in like, even if you're reading it, it is distracting you from the game. Yeah. And for me, like APA has done it so often uh -huh. and for so long, that's just his comfort zone when he's randomly trash talking. I don't think it negatively affects his play, and it has a chance of negatively affecting the opponent. So I think he should do it literally every game. Also, <laughs> you have power, chat, by the way. You know the reason why he tweeted out that he's going to take a vow of silence is because there's been so much backlash against him mm -hmm. from doing it in the previous one. That so if you it. all send supportive messages to APA and to his team as well, then the team will be like, oh, this is great branding. You should do it again, APA. Like, you can actually change the course of APA. Social media. I like that. History. Send, send him. Send him some encouragement. Sick. I love it. Uh, we have a coach interview though. Okay. We do. 15 minutes ago, we chatted with the coaches. Take a look. 
Hello, I am joined by Spawn and Enetron before the Dignitas TL matchup. Thank you both for joining me. Spawn, I'll start with you because you guys obviously suffered a really tough five game loss coming out of that. What were your words to the team? I mean, I thought we played pretty well on the day, to be honest. I think that FlyQuest is a super good team. Um, so we just said, you know, look, there's a lot of things we did right in this series. I think in the big moments, they played better than us. So if we can capture those moments going forward, I'm sure that we can make a really deep playoff run. And then for you, obviously, you guys had a lot of prep time to kind of prepare. Um, you didn't necessarily know your opponent was going to be TL, but what was your prep week going into this playoff match? I think, first of all, we worked to perfect our weaknesses, kind of. Uh, it's really important to have an identity going into a BO5, so we started practicing uh, more our identity as a squad. Once we knew that Team Liquid is going to be indeed our opponent, then we started gathering all the information that we had against them. And yeah, as you said, we had pretty good width of practice. So yeah, we're pretty confident. What is the toughest thing that you have to about facing Team Liquid? I don't know, last time we played them, we had a pretty good read on them, on them I feel like, in the Super Week. Uh, I think they played really good also versus FlyQuest, as uh, Spawn here said. So, in general, I think our teams, we have similar strengths. So, I really want to see how this, this match is going to go on the stage. And then, for you, what's the toughest thing about facing Dignitas, and how do you feel like TL is going to face up? I mean, I feel like uh, Dignitas is a team with really solid fundamentals, to be honest. They play like a very... Uh, predictable but methodical way which if you don't tear them out of that mythology like method uh, methodical play style then it's actually really hard to get a grasp in the game so i think we need to upset them somewhere in the game and then be able to you know take hold that way all right any last words any moment moments of trash talk i don't know i mean i don't have something to trust here because i think that we have a really big respect towards team liquid in general uh they have been our screen pass for a really long time too so we were really happy always playing against them I hope the old chat will be quite quiet today so we can fully focus if this is what the upset you were mean about. But in general, I think we're going to have a really good game overall. So. APA did tweet the, the zip emoji, so we have that. Uh, how about you? Yeah, I mean, same thing, right? I mean, uh, it's no secret. I think like Fly and Dig were actually uh, the two teams we scrimmed the most. And obviously, we get to play them in playoff. And I think that, you know, we have a really healthy respect for Dignitas as well. So uh, we look forward to the game. Hopefully, we can show up like we did against Fly, and it'll be a great series. All right. Well, thank you both for taking the time. All the best in today's series. And we'll see you on the Rift. Here's the bracket for the upcoming rest of playoffs you can see the winner of this will play 100 thieves on friday that is a different schedule next weekend it'll be friday saturday coaches didn't give you much in that emily respectful. they have too they much respect respectful. for each other yeah my biggest takeaway from that was the size of spawn's arms he's flexing <laughs> yeah he is getting Jack this split he did tell me that when he's stressed out he's going to the gym He's had a very stressful. He's been yeah, stressed. Yeah, yeah. He's been very Looks stressed. Looks like he's been going to the gym a That's lot. That's my takeaway. <laughs> I was no going to point out the pin. He like he. It's very rare. Like he's wearing that pin, and Emily was saying it is Jan's face on it. Yeah, it's Jan it, from when he dyed his hair in 2022, I think. I think okay. Jan earned that from like being their their most valuable player in their series that they lost. Mm. So and maybe maybe we'll see. Whichever player plays the best, like Spawn's gonna wear their pin or something. Yeah. Some sort of extra little bonus. Okay. Oh, oh there, nice. it is. there it is. He's smiling like we know we're giving him compliments, but he has no idea. Yes. <laughs> he at cannot all. hear us at all. Mm -hmm. Impact and Rich. Ooh, that's a good one. It is. Impact had been the carry for this team. Rich, last year, I'd say for Dignitas was the carry, but it's kind of been off this year. Yeah, Rich in particular, I think it's quite unfortunate to see. I think a lot of it comes from the change in direction of how the team is playing. Because last year was just resources thrown topside. They didn't really have much faith in the bot side of the map. This time around, the resources, I would say, has been going towards bot lane a little bit more. But we haven't been seeing the same Rich we've seen last year, at least within the lane. He's played a lot of different stuff. Yeah, last think, year to this year. I think we saw flashes of it with the top TF. Like yeah. I do think if TL decide to go like Udir early or something like that, we could see a counter pick from Rich, especially if Dignitas are on red side. I also do think it does speak to his flexibility where they have decided 
Uh, to Spawn's point, when he was commenting on Dignitas, they are a very methodical team. They want to play around bot lane. And even without a lot of resources, I think Rich generally has been having a pretty quiet but good split. Like, he's had a lot of really good NAR plays specifically that set them up in a lot of team fights. Yeah, I like the uh, damage per gold stat for both these two top laners. They were number one and number two in the league. Um, obviously, that has a lot to do with champion choice, too, yeah. especially for top lane, but they've been doing a lot with the amount of gold that they got. Impact, I would say, though, oh my goodness, especially for the beginning of spring, he was the single most important person on the entire Team Liquid team, doing so much as far as objectives uh, and, and setting up the rest of the team for success as well. That goes without saying, though, like, this guy is the veteran of the LCS mm -hmm. top lane. That's why it's gonna still be still performing. It's gonna be tough for Rich because absolutely, Impact has been a top two top laner in the league for this split. Like, at least to me, very clearly. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it has been, been due to the fact that yes, he's been consistent where a lot of the players on uh, Team Liquid have not. And then on top of that, He's just been a great carry for the team. His Rumble game, I actually liked. Uh, one of his Jax games was also a great one. Earlier on in the split, he was the King of Udyr, which is not a, it was not a carry pick, but he did a lot for the team and how he played around the map. So he he was and still is the backbone. It's just nice to see that specifically Yon and Core JJ are stepping up. Oh man, yeah. the, the energy faces in the background of the wall. I feel so, that makes me sad. No! They, they got eliminated. Sad in memory. Are they too happy? <laughs> I have no idea. How, how did they, they sneak in there? <laughs> <laughs> that just hit me in the heart. <laughs> oh, man. They're going to be back, yeah. Kobe. It's summer sports. Oh, Months away. Reminder. The, the wall uh, of memories <laughs> behind them. Uh, going back to top lane, though, I think one other big thing about impact also um, to your point, Raz, in terms of how he uses his pressure, how he can take over the top side, is that it's a really easy lane for Umti to play around. And I think that's typically where, um, even though it was TL's bot lane that became the focus in the FlyQuest series, uh, Umti has typically paved around top. And we look at Umti and, versus XU. Yeah. It's a really interesting matchup for me because I think Umti coming over here, how he's played on TL, the kind of aggressive counter jungling that we've seen from him has always been a hallmark of his style. Meanwhile, Exu, I was impressed with him when he was in NACL. I did not expect him to play as well as he has, especially towards the beginning and the yeah. middle of the split, like mm. right before the break. Um, he's really, really looked good on this Dignitas team. And he's also really understood where he wants to apply pressure, which is balling. And I think it is a Blessing and a curse, the language barriers that Dignitas have on their team, because XU's even said in interviews, like, I still have a hard time communicating with my solo lane. What's the blessing part? Well, he's really good at playing around bot lane. It gives them a direction. The blessing is, yeah. uh, I can't communicate with the top side. It so. simplifies it, right? Like, you only got a couple <laughs> numbers in your phone. You're, gonna, yeah. you're really responsive to that one friend. Because yeah. it's all you can ever text. Yeah. It's the yeah. only one you can ever text. So you've got a really like close a curse. relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Blessing. Yeah, it's a, a, it's a are, solid blessing. They are probably <laughs> the best bot lane jungle like trio that. I mean, maybe that we've had in the LCS, as silly as that sounds, uh, with how much they are playing around it, and it becomes a win condition. Now, in a best of five, maybe that's a curse because they do have somewhat of a one uh, dimensional play style, yeah. but it's been working for them to get them into playoffs in the first place. Yeah, and I want to remind people that even in the last week of the regular season, XU wasn't happy with his own particular play. He felt mm -hmm. like he didn't perform, and it was actually the rest of the team that stood up. So that's where the bot lane comes into play, where I do think Tomo and Isles has been the strongest ball lane Dignitas as an organization has had in a long time. Um, and a team that, yes, they do get supported. So I think ball lane is going to be really important um, to me with the champion that comes to mind when I think about them is is the Smolder pick. Smolder? Yeah, uh, Tomo Smolder and how confident he is and the team is around playing around him. So it's been a team fight focused team and, and playing front to back that's been the, the focus for Dignitas. Yeah, I think, I don't think, unlike yesterday, where we saw Smolder kind of fall through the draft towards the end, where both teams mm. were just like, eh, we'll ban Senna, the Smolder, we don't care about suddenly. Um, these two teams, I think, are going to be a lot more bot lane focused. Yeah. They will lock in that Smolder. Um, Tomo and Isles specifically, though, I remember them being super high up in Champions queue at the beginning of the season, right? And we're yeah. like, okay, these two are grinding. They're destroying people in the 2v2, in Champs queue and in Solo queue. How well are they going to do on the LCS stage? And I think 
having a team that facilitates that, like we talked about, XU had the spot side a lot. Yeah. Um, but the two of them have been doing surprisingly well in their 2v2 lanes. And so it's no wonder that Dignitas have decided to play around them. Well, I'm glad both of you did a good job hyping up the Dignitas bottom lane because I'm all on the TL bot yep. lane train mm. <laughs> with, with well, even in their losses for TL, Jan uh, mm. and Core JJ were, yeah. were getting 2v2 kills on bottom. Felt like they always had pressure. They're getting turret plates. Um, in the team fights, they was, had a, a very, very uh, high percentage of the damage uh, that the team was able to put out. So. Uh, I'm pretty hyped for it. And then we also had a lot of the Cloud9 members after their victory were talking about and, and praising this TL bottom lane from scrims. Of course, we know the, the scrim rumors are very good for, for TL yeah. and a decent amount for Dignitas yeah. too. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm very much looking forward to the bot lane matchup. And I think that TL, especially at the early stages, are gonna be very aggressive and you know we may see some more 2v2 kills. I mean it sounds like you think Chell's gonna win the series. Ah, well, you wanna get the prediction, chat? Because, I mean, yes, uh... I do. I wanna see them because I have <laughs> I have a weird I have a weird feeling about this series. Uh, okay. I think oh, normally you you'd predict Team Liquid. And I, yeah, wow. okay, everyone's predicting Team Liquid. But what? Dig had Not everyone. I, look, I wanna really put it out. good early games. I just have this weird feeling about TL because every time during the regular season where I'd see Team Liquid have like a nice big win, yeah. they kind of fall on their face afterwards. I want to put it out there to the production. I sent in my prediction as a 3-0 Team Liquid. Oh, did Whoa. you? Yes, I did. It wasn't 3-2. Okay. It was definitely a 3 Okay, okay, give me, I don't believe give it out there. Liquid. I am You're confident. You're on your phone on chat all the time. I anyway, am so. confident. Is Bang. His oh, he did. And I put a crying emoji. That crying emoji was for Dignitas. <laughs> okay. I was crying. Dignitas hates you now. Yeah, it's okay. So Raz yeah. is going to be accept the producer, man. With his prediction. 3 0 TL. Back to your weird feeling, though. Yeah. Did you say Team Liquid, when they have a big win, then they have a big flop afterwards? Yeah. That's how I've Because they lost this, to get here. Uh, <laughs> true, but they played a lot better than people expected them to. Ah, so it's an expectation yeah. okay. thing. So now it's one of those things where they had two, two, of, two big wins. So do you think it's going to be more of a TL crumble than. So, okay, I think if Dig wins this series, a lot of it will have to do with early games. Well, if they're putting in the coach, Spawn's sitting down now. I mean, that's definitely going to cause the problem. Yeah. Spawn is... And he is not as good as y'all. <laughs> so... He's definitely not. <laughs> yeah, that's why he's got match. the pin on! Oh, he's... True. He, he told us what he was going to do the entire time! <laughs> but, no, li literally, I think it would be uh, Dove, actually outplays APA, so they just kind of passively win mid lane. This is how Dignitas okay, wins. I'm yeah, not saying yeah, yeah. exactly how it's going to yeah. happen. Uh, and then XU and Tomo Wiles actually just have better coordination and win the bot lane, because if you stop Cordia J from roaming, APA is not necessarily a carry player. It's hard for Impact to carry a five-game series by himself. That would be Dignitas's road to winning. Yeah, uh, honestly, too, I do think this one is a really close one. Yeah. So I'm glad that somebody does have the, the Dignitas side of it. Um, especially talking to a lot of the players, they're like, yeah, Dignitas is way better than they have been, uh, you know, f the last couple of years with this lineup. So, um, looks looks like it's yeah. going to be a competitive series. We've had two straight five-game series, hoping for a third. As you can see from the timer, we are minutes away from the first champ select as soon as Jan gets back to his chair. But let's send it up to the stage to get into the games. Hey you, why aren't you watching the LCS right now? You should be. No excuses. You're tired? Doesn't matter. No excuses. Oh, I'm severely injured and the ambulance has to take me to the hospital. No excuses. Oh, it's my wedding today and my family will be pissed if I don't show up. No excuses. Oh, I need to get a job to pay my bills. No excuses. If the LCS is on, you're watching it. You hear me, you don't forget to breathe, and you shouldn't forget to watch the LCS. No excuses! Even if you're playing a Rams with the squad and the LCS commissioner keeps throwing your games, but you have to end the night on a W. No excuses! Even if it's your special hour of the day that you have reserved to watch back NRG versus G2 at Worlds, you watch the LCS. Actually, that one's understandable. True. I haven't missed a day since that happened. But besides that, no, no excuses. excuses.
Arriving at the studio now, a Team Liquid fighting for their lives after a long battle against FlyQuest barely didn't go their way. And their opponents on the other side, Dignitas, the underdog squad of playoffs, looking to show everyone they've got what it takes to make a run through the lower bracket. The final day of the first week of LCS playoffs starts right now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the last day of the first week of LCS playoffs here in spring 2024. I am Captain Flowers. I am joined by Azael and special guest Sven for this entire best of five. It's Team Liquid, it's Dignitas, and it's the last day of spring for one of the two squads. It's going to be a good one, man. Team Liquid obviously coming in off a very disappointing loss to FlyQuest. Incredibly close uh, in that one, but... We've had back-to-back -back five game series. Oh no. Smolder's left though. Oh, no. And we, we already know if they don't take it, Tomo wants to, because yeah. Dignitas has talked so much about how, you know, Tomo is the best Smolder in the league. That's their style, that's their champion. So you basically have to take it away. Sometimes they also think it's just like the easiest link on for Dignitas is to have Tomo on a hyper carry. Like mm -hmm. Jinx isn't a meta champion, but they're banning it anyways and they're taking away the, the Smolder, so they don't want to keep up Tomo off of the hyper carries, the late game, you know, one v nine champions. Yeah, this will be interesting because last time these two teams played uh, was the Tomo Zaya Pentakill game. Yep. Um, yep. In that win. And so when they hover Rakan, I was like, I wonder if they just go Zaya Rakan. I wonder if they actually go for something <laughs> like that. Uh, a lot of talk about, you know, Zeri as an answer into Smolder. Uh, where do you kind of lie as, as some of your kind of favorite answers? And Zeri is it? good if your support roams the whole game, then you commit 1v1 against him at level 6. But I think Senna being open just means it's going to be a slam dunk Nautilus and then. Some jungler or mid laner like Talia is good, flex pick, and then just send on three. That's probably gonna be what they're going for here. I like send on against uh, Smolder. I think it wins lane pretty mm -hmm. much every level the whole game. Obviously, you get outscaled late, late game, but that's everything against Smolder. So I think Dingtas has been playing really well when oh, they win lane. Oh. Okay. Remember, like Team Liquid did get <laughs> one of their other wins earlier this split, running the double dragon comp. You just, yeah. You're talking about Smolder outscales everything. Aurelian Soul is one of the only things that scales to the same level that he does. And the, the, the dragons for Team Liquid are ready to go for the late game. Honestly, this is kind of how TL have won most of their games throughout the split. Not this exact comp, but yeah. just late game scaling. They go for 5v5, they go for late game. That's kind of how they win. When they experiment, when they move away from that, that's usually when they're taking L's. My have some new players, but TL is always the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of the Kaisa pick. I think Senna would have been better, but Dignitas have been playing well when their bot lane is enabled. That yeah. has been their go to their whole split almost, and all their wins is they're blind wind lane and then they can do something with, with that. And I mean, you have to give a lot of credit, I think, to Tomo and Isles. Uh, the expectation, you know, was not that these guys would be able to compete with some of the, the, yep. the bot lanes at the top, but I think they really have surpassed expectations. Uh, and I think that they're showing they deserve to be in the LCS, that they can compete when we're talking about them as a win condition here for a playoff team. We'll see if they can get it done in game one against TL. I'm kind of curious on your take with the Kaisa builds, because we were joking around about it uh, yesterday a little bit uh, with Meteos, but it feels like yeah. people basically are building something different on this champion every single game. Yeah, you go into the store, close your eyes, and you just <laughs> buy whatever looks nice. Yeah. yeah. I think Static Shape is a bait. That's my yeah. first take. Okay. Okay. I think if you want to go AD, it's Kraken Slayer, and then it's Terminus, or it's Namori. Um, I think if you want to go AP, that's fine as well. It scales like Smolder does, yeah. but it's weaker on one item. The only thing about AP build is that you're already tied the Nautilus, right? So you yeah. need to have two big AD guys here on last pick for Dignitas. So they are kind of forced to pick full AD on the last picks here if they want to play um, the AP kind of stuff. I think actually not bad. The Halo Blades, you know, Man Immune, Poke build. Yeah, yeah. we've seen Man Immune. We've seen... Yesterday we saw Shiv into Kraken. We saw Kraken yeah. burst. We saw Kraken into Rage Blade. <laughs> we saw Man Immune into Ludens. We saw um, the triple upgrade build where people yeah. did like Shiv... Kraken, then Nashers, yeah. and then into uh, into like uh, not Void Staff. Uh, I can't think. He, Crypt Bloom. Crypt Bloom. Crypto, yeah. Crypto Bloom. Yeah, Crypto Bloom. <laughs> the one that has replaced Void Staff. Yeah. Entirely. It seems like it's better than Void Staff. It just is. And it's cheaper. Give, no give, one buys Void haste, Staff. AOE heal. It's just too good. Yeah, it is way too good compared to Void Staff. It just deleted that item from better the build path as like, well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Way better. All right. We'll see if APA is going to be able to perform today. Obviously, a lot of eyes on him. Some people love the trash talk, some people hate it, but it is getting APA a lot of attention. Yeah, I think yeah, it's good for the league. I think it is good for the league, and I think it's, it's fun to watch, it's fun to listen to. But that being said, 
when he trash talks and it doesn't go well, he's going to get a lot of flames. So he's got to be able yeah. to take it. And I know he tweeted out that he's going to take a vow of silence for this. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see if he can stick to it. We'll see about that. Yeah. I, I remember I cast his very first game in LCS. Day one, game one, LCS. He was trash talking in the lobby. Like this guy just <laughs> loves to type. I mean, honestly, I, I have a trick for it, you know? Like, yeah. You know, don't hold back, but uh, you got to back it up sometimes as well. Oh, you like take some heat from the, the fans <laughs> and the players as well. And, you know, Jensen was talking some serious smack the other day after the game too. He was, but, but I will say, I felt like he kind of got in FlyQuest's head, right? Yeah. And yeah. it's like, the fire people, people can flame you all they want, but at the end of the day, if it's actually giving your team a better chance to win, hey! Yeah. There were those like five-man dives while on APA where they could ace in return yeah. for killing him. And <laughs> he was sitting there smiling on his face. Like, it's like global taunt. Yeah, it really is. And I think that actually did go for the heavy AD here in, uh, in the second phase. So yeah. it could be the AP Kai'Sa. I don't think it's going to be the AP Kai'Sa. I think it's going to be the tempo and just on hit, you know, progress layer, ship, something like that. So we talked about Team Liquid scaling through their carries, their last couple picks of the draft, and the Renekton and the Xin Zhao. The tools to get them there, right? The yes. Renekton's going to give you an early lane that'll have some priority, some pressure. Xin's got some excellent ganking capabilities to make sure that he's ready to protect these dragons as they scale up. Yeah, you got to bridge the gap somehow, you know, between scaling and, and early game. And Xin Zhao and Renekton are pretty useless in late game, but they're really good in the early game. So it, I think perhaps we'll see TL just playing safe on bot side and just trying to go for corrupts early game and just late game to go for the, the dragons. And while I won't say that Jace or Kai'Sa are shocking champions, it is the first time for both Rich and Tomo that they've actually played them this year. So okay. that is a little bit surprising. So maybe trying to throw a little bit of a wrench in the gears of TL's prep, uh, because both these guys have played a ton of champions. They have some of the deepest champion pools uh, that we saw in the LCS. You know, when you look at Tomo, when you look at Rich, like they played a lot of different stuff, but uh, first time on both those champs. Yeah, it's important to note that TL actually banned the NAR mm -hmm. and the, in the first phase, I think it was, and they yep. also banned and the, the Aatrox. And the Aatrox. So Rich is kind of like, Taking half a champ, champ pool out of here. Udyr was also banned as well. Yeah. Uh, he didn't necessarily want to go AP, so he couldn't play Rumble. Yeah. Uh, but he has played like Poppy, Jax, Renekton. He's played a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's just immediately go into the game here. I want to see, do you guys think that Dignitas has the tools to shut down this Team Liquid scaling machine before it comes online? Because we're already talking about the squad that's starting in the lower bracket. This is the underdog team that people are going to be surprised if they make a run. Is this a recipe for success in game number one and trying to do that? I definitely think they have the underdog of this playoffs. I think they're the team with the dark horse for sure. In this game, they actually have quick and lanes from what I can tell, so that should be able to make something happen in the early game here. And Tomo does have Hail Blades, which is what you go and you're going for the AP build, so could be something here. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. <laughs> Look at it. Just nice, happy, good luck, have fun. Yep. Just normal stuff. Hope everyone has a good game of League of Legends. Rich only with the good luck here. Sportsmanship. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't hope to have fun. DM, yeah. He only wants them to have, have luck. No fun. <laughs> All right. Thought we might have gotten a little bit more spice from the invade, but unfortunately, not a whole lot there. Just Dignitas moving in, sitting down a little bit of vision. Has spawned. And they're right back out. Well, it's going to be an exciting one. I, I do think... When you know you're looking at a, at a matchup like this, I really favor ease of execution, and I just feel like on the TL side, they don't actually have to do anything. Yeah, the comp is definitely easier to play. Yeah, like yeah. You, you're basically going in, you're talking about win conditions, you're talking about how you need to play the game. You just kind of stack and you farm. Like you, eventually, you're going to get to the point where Smolder Aesol are so hard to deal with, whereas all the pressure feels like it's on Dignitas. Yeah, we'll say if they can actually go for the poke comp with the AP Kaisa and the Jace, they actually have a really strong just standoff, you know, play for the poke, mm -hmm. and they can, they can force TL into them. That might be an even easier playstyle than the scale for late game. So True. if they go for the poke comp, I can actually see them winning uh, the standoffs and force TL into them. Nice Hailblade straight there from Dignitas. Dignitas with control over the lanes, just like we were kind of expecting there. The advantage in the range of top side for Jace versus Renekton. Talia versus an Aurelian Soul that has no stacks early on. So what does this mean for the ganks, however? XU has been a big engine for Dignitas getting things done in games where they look good. He's usually one of the reasons why that happens. So I'm going to have eyes on his Lee Sin in this early game to really get these guys rolling and make sure they don't allow TL to play this free stacking game you guys are talking about. Yeah, I really doubt we're going to see much <laughs> from these junglers besides the full clear here. That is, it is pro play after all, and it's first game of the series as well, so it tends to be just, you know, a full clear and a, and a crab and then a base, probably. But I think Exu, once he hits level 6 or once the grub spawn, I won't see him get active. He has three pushing lanes this game, so he should be able to do whatever he wants basically the entire early game. 
This is actually really interesting as well. Um, this is something we saw River doing yesterday, where on a lot of his a lot of his jungle clears, he was actually doing three camps base for Longsword, then yep. go back out instead of the full six camp clear. So it seems to be a little bit more of the meta. I was talking to some people about you know what they thought the advantage for that was, and it was mostly that if you think that you're going to be able to fight. You know, immediately you go for the immediate base, then you get back out on the map. Now you have this additional combat okay. power, and they're going to use the Nautilus basically as that ward hop and try to meet him at his red. So Umti could be in trouble, but he's going to get the news they're already on it. Teal should know about this since Isle is yeah. in his lane and Tomo is there alone. He's just going to give it. Not bad, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's just one camp, but it's not nothing, right? It's a small advantage. Yeah, it's a red buff. It kind of removes himself from the early game. He can't gank anyone with this kind of, you know. He's actually going to cross, game. so he's going to try to double scuttle because they have pushing bot and he has pushing mid. So he go top side. You take that scuttle and then he could cross back to his bot camps and bot scuttle potentially. But this does mean it's a little bit more inefficient as far as your pathing because yeah. you're you're crossing the map so much times and then you're going back to base. You're doing all these things. So he could build an eventual gold lead, but Omti is right now what we call jobless. Yeah, <laughs> he has no camps. He has nowhere to go. He just running around hoping for someone to to gank and Dignitas should know that he's jobless and will force some sort of gank or perhaps a fight on the bot side here for the Dignitas camps. Yeah, Dexter actually, actually didn't cross map which is kind of weird. I feel like not worth crossing to the top crap just to do your chickens again. He is level 2 camp instead of level 1 camp so not bad for him but he doesn't have vision of Umti here so Umti could have been taking his camps if all he knows. Yeah. She does know. A little risky at this point, I think. Yeah. yeah. He realizes that as well. Yeah, but now he really doesn't have much of anything yeah, to do. Now like, he's jobless. He, he can walk topside and try to get his Gromp, but it's like he is in a pretty awkward spot as well. So at the end of the day, XU is going to come out ahead from this pathing. And I do like that they coordinated that invade with Isles. They get the push bot, yeah. they move up Isles, use him for that ward hop. Uh, to be able to get over the wall. It's just it's yeah. some smart early planning. And I think these are things that you should always come into a playoff series with some of these ideas about how you want to play level ones. Mm -hmm. Try to, you know, come up with some little things that could be surprising and maybe get you an edge. Yeah, it ain't much, but it's something. Exactly, right. Yeah. And it could have been more, right? You know, had MT been at the red buff as they're going around, maybe yep. they get a kill. Um, so I think it's one of these things where it's like, it's really low risk and there's potential for maybe a, a medium reward. So yeah, for sure. Uh, I think it's always worth doing a play like that. Also important to keep as hook from Niles. Important to keep track of the Oh, nice W from Tomo as well. It's important to keep track of the jungler as well. It allows Rich to play more aggressive in his lane, get a mm -hmm. play tier as you saw on on impact. So it's just it's more than just another dredge line, bottom lane. Isles and Tomo continuing to play this one aggressively. Yawn and Core JJ still doing a fine job farming up. Yawn now 27 stacks in five and a half minutes, so very much on time for getting that extra stacking going. But it is XU with control over the Drake pit as Isles and Tomo keep the pressure on Core JJ down to barely 100 HP now. As Team Liquid's bottom lane is going to be forced back up, also oh. making a rotation down. The Weaver's Wall is ready to cast. Oh. If they can find Core and Yawn still hanging around, Yon is dead. this should be a big play coming out from Dignitas. Oh, Seismic shove finds him. Yawn is low, but he ain't dead yet. The crash down controlling XU. Dignitas gets first blood over on their jungler, and they ain't done yet. A horde drive comes oh, right in, in, but not quite there. Core JJ tried to be the hero, but he dies all the same. It wasn't clean, but he got the job done. Nice early game from Dignitas here. Really, really nice, honestly. Yeah. Bottom lane, Dignitas setting up the, the double kill here for uh, for Exio. That was really well done. I mean, definitely a bit of a messy dive, <laughs> but at the end of the day, the yeah. fact, like, the result is very, very yeah. good for Dignitas. Yon did this well, flying early into the wall to try to make it so basically Nautilus can't hook, so he's got to wait till after. Yeah, Misplaces yeah. the hook a little bit. Dove kind of saves it by hitting the seismic shove, but Dove wasn't the one that wanted to hold aggro, so that's where I think things went a little bit awkward. Isles should have just ignited first and yes, then thrown yes, out the hook. Absolutely. Because if he had aggro, then Dove can stay in. You get those kills earlier, and I think the dive is way more clean. I think you definitely start with a CC spell in this yeah. dive. You don't start with all attack. And then he flies into, into the wall and you can't hit him for like two seconds almost. Yeah. So I think you start with the knob all attack and then the hook. It's just too easy, right? Just tightening shot into the hook all the way around. But nonetheless, nice big task. And Tomo has bots here. So he is going for the mana meme. He is going for the AP build, which is pretty weak at this point of the game. But it's very, very strong on two or three items. So it might be able to match the late game scaling off the smolder. Well, Dignitas with a one and a half thousand gold lead. The first Drake already under their belts pretty early in the game. This is what we wanted to see from them if they need yeah. to be the ones putting the pressure on Team Liquid. And that pressure continues here in the top lane. Every time the camera has panned up here, it's just been Rich shoving in impact, putting some more pressure onto the turret, doing some damage to the plates. He's up about 10 farm right now. 
I mean, it's, it's hard to imagine the early game going much better. You invaded, yeah. you stole the red, you got a dragon basically on spawn. They took the first dragon at 530, I want to say, which is crazy. Very then fast. you did a dive. You had already taken a plate top. You had already taken a plate bot. You had push in mid. Like, they've done everything. So yeah. this is going incredibly well for Dig. Best part is TL didn't even get anything anywhere else. Nothing. You know, they didn't no get trade. top. They didn't get the, the grubs or anything. Um, they didn't get any camps anywhere. He just... Didn't get anything. Yeah, and Xyu now got both of those kills. Now, this was kind of a trend yesterday where oh. it, it felt like the junglers were always picking up the kills. Not going to spot that pink ward, unfortunately, as he does walk past it. The, the coach right That's now. That's a demerit him. point for him. <laughs> That's the coach right now behind uh, yep. the scene, slamming his table. He's going to be doing the bottom. He's going to point at the bush. He's got to zoom in on the pink ward. <laughs> this pink was walked over 10 times this, this game. <laughs> I've been there. All right, Isles level hitting six. level six now. That's what they were waiting on. Riptide to slow him down initially. Oh. Dragon Snot stops Tomo from being able to go any further forward. Dignitas <laughs> doesn't want to overcommit to this. Look, if the devs can give all of his abilities those goofy names, I can call it Dragon Snot. I feel yeah. like that's yeah, a fair yeah. trade. Yeah, I mean, it's at you, and there's a ball rolling out after he does it, so. I'm, I'm just putting what two and two together, together man. Yep. Exactly. I'm just putting two that's, and two together. That's lore accurate. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're getting <laughs> gooped up. That's why you're getting slowed down. You're like, what the <laughs> heck <laughs> is on me? You got gooped. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right. Lee Sin's taking the grubs. Look at that. Down there in the in the bottom left, Lee Sin's got grub control. So uh, not only did Team Liquid not manage to secure those as a trade earlier, but they haven't managed to secure them at all. Dignitas continuing to run things in the early game here. The uh, only thing that they aren't really stopping much of so far is the stacking over in mid APA because of the fact that the Talia roamed did have an opportunity to just yeah. free farm a little bit more. This is one of those win cons for Team Liquid. So we will need to see continued aggro from Dig. It's less than 90 seconds until the second Drake spawns, and I feel like they're going to want to be controlling that as well. But even as far as Yon stacking, it's not going that fast, right? Yeah, He's only at 56 here at, at 930. Um, I think Isles has done a good job of not giving him any free stacks. He's only walking up when he has an angle for a hook. He's not yep. just kind of like meandering around uh, for Targon stacks and giving over freebies. So, you know, Yon definitely not going at the fastest pace. Uh, APA, obviously, in the early game, it is going to be slower stacking there as well. But he's going to be doing Leandry's Rush, which I think is kind of that new age uh, build for Asol. I've seen some people do like tier into Leandry's and whatnot, but Leandry's is the first item is just so strong. Strong. There's so many easy ways to kind of AOE apply this. It looks like it's going to be another free Dignitas Dragon here in about 40 seconds as well. They are looking for top dive though. Yeah, Dignitas deciding to potentially make a play up here. If your opponents think you're going to be prepping for Drake, maybe you prep for top instead. Rich is the focus. Umpty and Impact can't burst him down in time, and now Isles and XU have arrived. Umpty is not long for this world, and Dove's the one to send him to the next. Nicely played by Dig. I feel like Dig's has smell TL giving the Dragon meant they were going to go top side, so they tried to defend Rich instead of making a play on bot side, which I actually really like here. Defending the Jace, allowing to, to free farm and keep pushing lanes. So I think Dig's is just Playing way better in Jordan game than Teal. Two steps ahead. Yeah, they're Every looking time. very, very good. I mean, Dignitas saw Umpty. Did Umpty not realize that they were up there as well? Because, like, he, he kind of just went for that play aggressive. I thought that they had both seen each other, but I didn't actually uh, see for certain on the vision. He I mean, saw Dignitas them earlier well aware on, of it. on the ramp area near the chickens, so yeah. he should have known they were in the, in the area at least. But they fully committed to that instantly. I mean, Dove also TP'd. Uh, APA had already spent his TP back to lane. Yep. That's another advantage that you get for Dove having that pushing mid. Exactly. So it is looking really good. Now they're moving down towards the bot side. They spotted out Core JJ, who was hanging out in that brush, got tagged by the Kaisa W. And Dig is looking like they're at least considering trying to fight for this. Team Liquid. Picking up the crab here first. Not trying to hard force anything here just yet, but Core JJ makes the engage. Oh. Magnet Storm and immediate follow up from APA and Yawn. The burst hits true. XU and Dub both drop. That's exactly what Team Liquid needed. The downside of making top plays is that you lose vision on the bot side, and Core JJ took full advantage of it. A nice engage from the Fog of War here. Super nice combo with AP as well. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the rail ulti into the Obeon Soul stun and the E as well, keeping them in there. Yeah, I mean, that was perfectly timed. It felt like there was basically no window for them to do anything out of it. Falling Star hits right as that CC is ending from the rel. The ult from Yawn came over the top yeah. all at the same time. Like, everything connected instantly. You got a shutdown and two kills on yeah. APA. The best person yep. to receive that gold. Plus, I think the biggest mistake in Dig Task is that they should have gone to ball in, mm -hmm. had Dove, you know, connect with the ultimate instead of trying to fight mid 2v2. Just mm -hmm. play around the Kai'Sa. Dove can always come there as fast as, uh, as the Obeon Soul, thanks to his, his wall. They even knew he was there. Yeah, they they saw him hit the crab just now. Yeah. Maybe they're trying to bait him to jump on them. Yeah, I guess maybe they didn't realize where Asol was, or they didn't think that they were going to be... 
Maybe X, he was oh. thinking I can step forward and then I'm just gonna be able to safeguard back and disengage it, but. Gotta bait it out the, the rail, perhaps. Mm -hmm. He's popping off. Where's the chat? Hold on. <laughs> All right, nope, nope. He's Vow still staying true. Has he's, been still, maintained. he's still staying true to his vow. Monk mental in the mid lane as Umpty will not find when becomes lightning until <laughs> Mother just walks away. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a nice little injection of stacks, too. Every time you hit people with the all for Asol, you do get uh, five stacks per person you hit. Uh, so he's up to 103 now, stacking up the Stardust here. And Yon does have the Essence Reverse, so he's going to be really kind of accelerating at this point. You get Shojin, you get CDR Boots, you're moving in mid as well. This is kind of generally when people do it on one item. Shove him mid, start farming up Wolves, start farming up uh, the Raptors as well, and really just try to accelerate the stacks. With Essence Reaver, removing the mana cost of the Q, you're just constantly vomiting this spell every single time it's on cooldown. Let's see if Impact ends up suffering anything here. Probably not. Isles is going to be found here in the brush by Umpty. Has to dredge line back to safety. XU working on that second round of grubs. He already claimed the first one. If Umpty can come up and just smite one of them away, they can stop Dignitas from hitting that six grub power point. XU... He's saving the spell. just working on the one. second one, exactly. They want to make sure that they can get it up. He's going to get locked down here by the dredge line. The burst ain't enough to kill him just yet. He's trying to stay alive with the Crescent Guard, but Mom comes in, and Team Liquid's ready to fight back. Core JJ with a Magnet Storm looking for the lockdown on Isles. APA gets him with a Shockwave. Dignitas is still winning the fight, though. Two for one so far. Yon and APA coming in as Dub tries to kite back. Tomo and Rich still looking for their shots. APA and Core. Maybe there's an angle here, maybe not. Team Liquid, they at least stop the six grubs because the clock moved forward enough to force despawn them. Dignitas only get to claim five. But still, really good for Dig. They get yeah. two of the grubs, they win out on the fight, they slink away with low health bars. They're feeling good. And we can watch this one more time. So, you know, XU was saving a smite for that sixth one. Uh, Umpty's coming down, Renekton's coming up. They have that TP early coming in here from Talia. So they just look for the engage onto Umpty. You can see Tomo, Killer Instinct into the Crescent Guard, gets inside that ultimate to help him burst down. Then Core, pretty nice turn here. And with the Renekton arriving, things do get a little bit dicey. Uh, the Empowered Asol ult tags a lot of people for that splash. XU's forced out. And this is where it's like, even though Dig was winning, quote unquote, Yon's full health and APA is still pretty healthy. So it's yeah. hard to actually continue. Yeah, winning a fight against Asol with his Empowered Ultimate is really huge because he won't have enough for the next fight on the Dragon or the mm -hmm. Herald, whatever Dignitas chooses. So that's really huge for Dignitas. Good engage by Alice while waiting for his Jace to be closer than Renekton, right? Mm -hmm. So getting the engagement since out there. Really good job by him. All right, so let's check in on state of the game here since this is such a scaling war type of <laughs> game one. It's one Drake each side. We're 15 minutes in now, so plates are done. Laning phase has essentially ended. It's Dignitas with a 2,000 gold lead. Is that enough? Hold on, we might not even have time to wonder. Core JJ might be the target here for the start as the Sonic Wave won't find a target. Weaver's Wall is... Not doing a whole lot there, to be quite honest, but uh, Dignitas just gonna walk it off. Is 2,000 gold enough? I, I think, I don't even think they necessarily get outscaled because they yeah, are playing a scaling Kai'Sa build that's long range. And it's like Smolder and Asol have crazy scaling if they can hit you. But if you're just getting chain yeah. shock blasted and Kai'Sa W from two screens away, mm -hmm. sometimes you get poked out before you can even take the fight. Yeah, now Tomo has lost chapter, which gives mana for the mana immune to give more AD. So now he actually has to upgrade. He's got two items now. His Ludens is done. Yeah, once he gets an Amp Tome, he'll have both the Q upgrade and the W upgrade. He only has a Q right now, I believe. So yep, should he have needs it. five more AP. Yeah, so one, one Amp Tome, he'll have it. Start game. Ooh, Impact. In a little bit of trouble here as XU shows up to help Rich no to the skies, and Impact dies. Rich picks up the money, and Dignitas finds their sixth kill of the game. Rich is actually kind of rich this game. I didn't have a better word for it. I didn't mean to say Rich is rich. <laughs> He's but very wealthy. Yeah, exactly. He just has a lot of gold. He got four plates, I think, this game uh, into the top lane as well. Now two kills, 20. Nah, 15 CS advantage, he's doing really well. But I mean, that's kind of one of the nice side effects of all the attention that was being paid down around the bottom lane, right? With the invades, <laughs> with a bit yeah. of PvP. You draft Jace for the top lane and then leave him on an island, he's gonna smack most people around. The top lane dream, playing 1v1 only. No one else <laughs> interferes with his laning phase, the Jace dream. No, not the dream for the person playing the melee champion. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Renekton it's, nightmare. It's also, you know, Rich Rich to conquer, right? So he's there to brawl in that 1v1. It's not like he took phase rush to escape from ganks. So maybe yeah, a little bit sure. frustrating for impact to not have people come up there and try to interact. Because that's where Renekton can really succeed. If he doesn't have phase rush, if he's playing conquer, you get flash stun and your jungler's there, he's probably just dead. But instead, it's just kind of this fist fight. There's three tiers that are stacking up as well for Dig. We have, you know, Muramana going to be coming in for two players. We have the Archangels almost done for Dove. Uh, they have some pretty damn good scaling items. Dignitas has no vision of this play. Core J is going to have a really good angle here, wherever he chooses to flank from. 
I think Dignitas might just have to give this. Yeah, I think Dignitas learned their lesson last time. They don't want to walk up to a blind brush and let Core JJ engage on multiple yeah. targets. Instead, they're going to try to trade it back in mid. Falling Star comes down, but it doesn't get a whole lot just yet. XU still barely staying alive. Tries to get away, and he will. Dignitas still lots of HP on the four remaining oh. players. Downtown dredge line hits Umpty, but the follow-up isn't there. Nobody dies on either side. Team Liquid takes their second Drake of the game and barely holds onto their tier one turret, so Dignitas don't get anything in exchange. I really think Dignitas could have just gone for top tower or for the Herald mm -hmm. instead of trying to like semi-contest the, the dragon, you know, just give it this point. It's uh, you know, both teams have to have one dragon each at that point. Just just give it, you know, it doesn't matter at this point. Just go for the Herald, the top tower, get yeah. you know, Rich even more going than what it has. Yeah, top lane tier one would have been guaranteed for Jace. You could have taken Herald as yeah. well, and then that guarantees the mid tier one. Exactly. And then you're basically yeah. doing essentially a two tower for dragon trade. Yeah, for one mountain dragon. Yep. <laughs> it doesn't matter at this point in dragon. You're not going to get sold at this game realistically, yeah. right? And I do think that's one of the things, though, that sometimes where teams get baited in. Especially, yeah. I find this more common if they got an early dragon. They're like, well, we got this early dragon, so now we have <laughs> to get the rest of the dragons. We got a dragon at 530. We got to play for soul. Yeah, but the goal is like way more valuable until the moment you have soul. Yep. The dragons themselves aren't worth that much stats anymore. The early dragons are a down payment. Yes, you can try to spend it <laughs> exactly. working towards soul, but you can also invest it into Herald or yeah. Turret or look, another Turret. Look at this Jace right now. He's got one full item more than Impact. Yeah. That's, that's, sword that's to, such uh, a nightmare, nightmare. <laughs> for Redekton, dude. It's fully evolved Mana Moon and Eclipse with the Ionian Boots. This guy is just such a problem. Oh, Tomo oh. might be in a little bit of trouble here. It's Core JJ and Yon need a little more damage to finish him off, but they ain't gonna find it. Umpty comes in over the wall, and the shutdown goes over to Smolder. Yon and Team Liquid uh, find their punish on the Dignitas AD carry. I mean, they just forced that way too hard. They're, they don't need to be walking into the Smolder, letting him hit yeah. you to try to kill the tower in his face. You could just wait and slowly chip it down. The gold is there for the taking. Instead, really overforced there. They end up getting a shutdown. Yeah, they get out of TP and some stuff, but like there was just no reason to die for that, I think. Yeah, Smolder, the biggest shutdown merchant in the game for sure. Now, almost 200 stacks, almost at 20 minutes. We're he, getting there. He's on track to have it at 22, 23 minutes ish, and then it's <laughs> just going to be a problem. You got to wonder if Dignitas thinks they're getting outscaled with how they're playing. Mm. You know, they're forcing objectives they can't win. They're fighting mid tower like this when they just do the Herald. It was up the whole time. Yeah, I mean, they maybe, might be they came a little bit. maybe they came into this and their plan was to outscale, we will get soul. <laughs> you, know, maybe, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. You have to wonder if it's like, oh, we're at, oh. wait, hold on, Rich, flashing away here oh. with the falling star. He gets the outplay. He's a dragon slayer, man. Nicely done. I mean, I, it sounds funny, but like kind of unironically, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, we have pushing lanes. So we'll stack towards soul. That's how we're going to be able to, to match their scaling is we'll get soul while well, they do nothing in AFK. So then maybe they're feeling <laughs> the pressure her to actually get to the dragons and kind of force a little bit. Yeah, thanks for the thing to us. Rich wins the morning one. When the two fed guys meet side lane like this the two guys shut down you just hope your guy yeah. your guy wins and he did win this time <laughs> i mean that's touch. that's huge for dig rich has been pretty quiet for them this year last year for yes. Dignitas, it was yeah. all about oh rich is gonna carry it's gotta be rich it's gotta be rich with the crazy counter pick it's gonna be his quinn it's gonna be his loud it's gonna be something this year it hasn't been about him at all yeah. so if he could step up and have a big series in playoffs that he could be the x factor especially with what you mentioned back in draft it's his first chase it's not like this guy is playing Jace in the LCS all the time beforehand. Yeah, this split, this split, yeah. Uh, this split, yeah. But I love the fact that, like you mentioned, this is a way to throw a wrench into that prep that Team Liquid might have done. If you're not a team that's known for playing Jace and Kaisa, if you're a team that's known for just like, hey guys, we're gonna pick Smolder and then Death Ball around it for 30 yeah. minutes, and now you're playing this poke comp that's just constantly bringing in the artillery, Team Liquid might be caught unaware. And with how much gold the Kaisa and the Jace have, I really don't think it's just like a cut and dry, you just lose when Smolder hits 225, yeah. because range is the most powerful Powerful scaling ability in the game. Like range is the yep. most powerful scaling stat. If I cannot interact with you, it does not matter if I can one shot you when you're two screens away, just pelting yep. me. And Cordy is a good rail player, but even he can't engage on someone who's that far away. 21 minutes and 40 seconds. Smolder crosses That's a new LCS the finish record, line. Sure. That is a very fast stack compared to most of the times we see in LCS. Yeah, because sure. yesterday FBI got it at about 22, and I think that was the current LCS yeah, yeah. record. So this was even faster than that. I think that's really impressive from Yon, especially because he didn't have one of those freebie lanes to scale off of. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was against, it was the, it was a, a Senna, not a lane, Senna Orn lane. Yeah. Orn, yeah. Mm, yeah. The worst one, the, the, the two things. Orn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it was one of the kind of freebies. Now we can see APA does have the empowered ult, which does get scary because you maybe didn't care about the first dragon, you maybe didn't care about second, but giving them the third, 
does yeah. get kind of dicey, and fighting it when Aesol has empowered ulti is really tough because he's on two items. He's got the Rylize and the Leandries, and that ulti, it's like it's the whole screen. It's just massive. It's the answer to the poke. Yep. If you, uh, if normally you can't interact with somebody, simply cast your spell on the entire map. If you dodge one Kaiser W, the cooldown is, you know, more than double. So it is really yeah. huge if you can dodge just, just one of them. Then you know it won't be on all coming for a couple seconds. But the really good job help. with EQ and a W from Kaiser. Dredge line on Another Opti. One. Another Void Seeker finds Impact. Team give. Liquid just getting oh. bombarded by these damn things. With oh. Impact and APA both at half HP, Team Liquid has to surrender the objective. I think mm -hmm. this is the textbook example of exactly what you gentlemen were talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. It's, it's it's one thing if you can actually get up on them and utilize that damage, but if you can't get there, you can't get there. Umti even had to use his ulti just to walk out of the fight, so they're going to be able to take the dragon. So I think if Dignitas were feeling pressure before that fight, after that fight, they should not be feeling pressure. They should yeah. realize as long as long as we play the fights properly, as long as we don't give them the hard engage, there's going to be no real way for them to get anything from this scaling. So we just need to continue playing slow, continue playing measured. If they are over forcing and everyone's flashing forward just to try to get in range, well, they're going to get mauled by Talia anyway. So I think Dignitas are in a good spot. They just need to keep playing it cool, calm, collected. Most important thing was how well they retook the vision there on the Dragon. They didn't, like, you know, rush it to... Hang on. Oh. Now, hold on. Steps. Dignitas thought they might have had an angle here, but it could wow. be a counterpunch coming in from Team Liquid. Yawn picks up the kill on Isles. XU stuck in the back of the Baron Pit, just getting smacked around a little bit. He'll lose about 40% HP. Nicely done there from TL. The side steps away from the Dredge yeah. Line and the Sonic Wave prevented the initial move from Dig. But now, it's this a Baron. Tough, though. Against yeah. Kaisa Jace, you're going to get poked in, in there, but Impact is behind him. They're coming in. Impact wants his entry, and they found the lockdown on Rich. The Jace is shut down. Umpty, APA, and Yawn all injured, but Team Liquid has a 5v4 man advantage, and Isles isn't even in the fight yet. It's 5v3 for all intents and purposes. In XU. comes XU. He wants to make the steal, but he ain't going to find it. Team Liquid get a Baron and a kill on top. Dub gets hit by the breath from Mom, and Dignitas has to walk away. They're entire lead just evaporated and that is tough oh. they just kind of overforced there they lost track of where impact was they went way too early yeah i agree like look how healthy it is it's still over 8,000 health you don't need to be walking in there as jace you can just be poking them over the wall and playing it more slowly you can even combine for the steal like i even think if xu is here and you shock blast and and void seeker and everything all at once like you could just steal the baron yeah he even saw the, the hp with his q yeah and then kicks um into the wall and I, mean, I don't know. Maybe he thought he could get him over the wall, but def definitely too early. Rich went down too early as well. Dignitas, it felt like a bit of a panic moment there, <laughs> as Rich knows it. I mean, he was playing a great game. That's his first death. <laughs> That's when the winning coach, by the way. He's yeah. like, wait, we got that? How did, how did, how did that happen? When both are confused. <laughs> LCS, baby. <laughs> oh, Yeehaw. Man. But now, Teal has made it to the point where they are really... Happy. Small has three items, same as the Kaisa. He was behind the entire game and now he's suddenly ahead. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he got a number of kills there. Now they're getting towers. Now they got the Baron Gold. Uh, so that's a huge injection and he has that rapid fire done. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be feeling a lot better. It really bridges the gap between the range when they have the Baron. They can't really wave clear. Yeah. Dick has poke, but not wave clear. Well, and especially Talia's not there. So that's like all their wave clear practically. Yeah. Talia's actually splitting in the side lane. I'm not really sure why they have Rich. Oh, using his flash for no reason. Well, they're going to keep going. Talia's not coming back. Talia's actually going for this year three, so he's going to look to try to force someone to base. Asol looks like he's going back now. Um, and Dignitas will lose a couple towers. They're definitely not out of this game just yet. This is obviously a pretty big swing, but I do still think withstand the storm, set up around the next dragon, yeah. play it like you did the previous one. Okay. And yeah, TL has more gold. It is going to be a harder game, but if you don't give them an opportunity to interact with you before you poke them down, it's going to be your dragon still. And TL will have that Baron buff for another minute or so, but it's still about a minute and 45 until the dragon spawns. So you'll have 45 seconds of that fair, contested, neutral territory to play around with. Uh, reminder, you can see it at the bottom of your screen right now. Next week, we will be on Friday and Saturday, different from the usual Saturday and Sunday. So don't miss it. We only got to have two more weeks of playoffs after this one, and then Spring Split is all wrapped up. For one of these teams, it's going to end here today, and neither one of these guys wants to be the ones watching the rest of it from the couch. <laughs> Uh, Void Secret. Ooh, nicely done from Umpty. Not walking into that. Yeah, Dino's gotta really be hating how they play this game. 
Mm. You know, they were so far ahead. They played like a little panicky almost. They were mm -hmm. feeling rushed, I think, to get ahead when they were already winning the passive slow game. And then now they're here thinking, wow, we could have won this game so easily by not doing anything. There's one thing I will say that speaks a lot to, you know, experience and, and how, how yeah. much have you played in playoffs. A lot of these Dignitas guys have not had a lot of playoff experience whatsoever. Then you're looking over at the other side at guys like Core JJ and Impact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like... Like, one of those players probably has more playoff experience than the entire Digging Trust roster. Yeah, I think, I think Impact does have more than the entire team combined. I, think it does. I would think so. Yeah, for sure, I think. Both of these guys just, uh, they've they've been in those high-pressure situ mm -hmm. situations before. Yeah, and that's, yeah, yeah, you know, just two world, champs. two world champions. They've <laughs> probably pressure. been through a, a couple of best of five series in their time. Nothing compared to the LCS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and Tomo getting dulled. The burst comes in. He barely survives. He's getting away for now. Mom. Oh, Tomo just barely gets out of the way there with the flash. Team Liquid, though, they time that beautifully. It's five seconds until the Drake spawns, and they force the enemy carry back and got rid of both his summoner spells. That's and a look at the vision. There's absolutely nothing on that side of the map. They can't see anything. So when you're showing up to a dragon this late with no vision, you just can't walk in. It's yeah. just a death sentence. If you walk in and they're waiting in a brush, your game is over. So they're going to have to give this one up for sure. Uh, honestly, even if Tomo didn't get pushed out there, I felt like they were a little bit too late to actually yeah. get there and set up vision. Yeah. So I feel like they would have had to give it up regardless. Mm -hmm. They're now going to be facing a potential soul here for TL, uh, which does make things more difficult. Yeah, now you start splitting. Yeah. Because now the dragons actually matter. Looking at the smolder, 300 stacks, three and a half items, Sonyas. Oh boy. This is and no, this not where Dub wants to be. Space. And becomes lightning. Well, yeah, there's just no way. Dub becomes gray screen. Yeah, <laughs> Dub becomes dragon snot victim. Yawn can just pick that one Horrible up, no way problem. To die. The worst, the worst part about Smolder too. This guy is guaranteed so much money yes. after he hits 225 stacks, since he's just the an inbuilt KS machine. Yeah, you have the there's no player, way anybody man. else it's gets nice. the credit. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, right. The uh, AD carry perspective yeah, nice. versus the everybody else perspective. I deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> All me, bro. <laughs> I, I killed him once. I deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hit a minion with my Q and I hit someone else in the background. I deserve the skill. <laughs> <laughs> the best is when you when you queue someone and there's a dash into their own team. That feels great. Yeah. Dude, the one yesterday with the Cassante alt, like three miles yeah, away yeah, into exactly. Zimbabwe, but then the, the uh, smolder Q still, still hit him yeah. and got the kill. It's like, come on. I think the worst part of dying smolder is the sound it makes when you die. Oh, like the, the, like the elder the, execute the noise? Screeching, the screeching. Yeah. Elder, is this his mom screeching? Or I thought it was just like supposed to be similar to the elder noise, because it when smolder grows up, isn't he supposed to be like an elder dragon? Well, I don't know, bro. I always kind of thought it was the mom zapping him, too. Yeah, right? Oh. Yeah, it, it makes sense, right? Yeah. I thought it was smolder he's getting still, like elder dragon He's not powers. getting bigger. He's still a little baby. Man, maybe I should actually read the lore for things that aren't Skarner. Nah, I don't, I don't really, I, I just, we, it's oh, more God, funny if we just kind of make it up on yeah, the spot. I look at the thumbnails for the videos and then just let my imagination run wild <laughs> on what the character actually is. So. The lore is whatever you choose to believe it is. Yeah, the real lore was the friends we made along the way. Well, Baron's coming back. Let's see who's going to be friends with him this time. Last time around, it was Dignitas' destruction at the Baron pit. An age-old tale. Core but J. now, J. you're in the mid lane. Core JJ, what are you doing? Core's in a bit of a strange spot. He's oh. still gonna be kept alive. The oh, skies God. descend, and Dig will end. It's Yon grabbing one. Yon gets two. There's oh, another no. one coming in. They're about to burn away. A triple no. quadra. It's Smolder, baby. The Lee Sin barely gets away, but that should end the game right there. Team Liquid, Core JJ with the ultimate bamboozle. <laughs> Dignitas into their own destruction. Lee Sin against five. I don't think so. Dignitas may have controlled the game for the first 20 minutes, but the experience of Team Liquid shows up. They're going to force Lee right back into the fountain. Next, you can't do anything about this. Turret <laughs> even gets the execution, and it's TL taking game one. And we just talked about it, how Smolder sometimes kills someone, they dash into their own teammates and kill him. Rich dies his own teammates, <laughs> bringing him down with the Smolder Q. Uh, the, oh. We got some all chat at the end. Umpty goes, Penta for my baby, please. <laughs> <laughs> to which X you respond, your baby, give me Penta. That's <laughs> uh, funny, man. Oh, man. A little, little bit of banter there at the end. Honestly, 
the game from Dignitas for the first 20 minutes was really solid. You guys were talking about really how good. they were yeah. playing around the poke comp, how they were making it work, but unfortunately, 20 minutes of solid play gets undone by 60 seconds of that panicky style around the Baron pit. The Dignitas Baron, unfortunately, <laughs> that Classic. specter ever hanging over their heads as Team Liquid found the comeback angle. And after that play, Dignitas never really regained their footing. Yeah, I mean, that, that's really, really tough for Dig. You know, they had such a good early game, but all mistakes are not made equal in League of Legends. You no. make a mistake by the yep. Baron post 20 minutes, it is going to kill you. All right, with game number one wrapped up, a reminder to all y'all, Fantasy LCS is happening over on Sleeper. Make sure to lock in your picks and bands for next week's games if you want to top your league. And now wait, we're going to head on. Wait, 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 Flowers. Before we get to game two, I wanted to remind the audience of something that my good buddy Flowers here was really excited about a couple of years ago. Huh? So <laughs> it's horn, right. but he wears a trucker hat. No His Q, it has a 50-50 chance. It's a legendary skin. No we go all out, we go all out for this. It summons either a traffic cone or a stop sign. Uh -huh. When he charges at it with his E, it makes slamming on the brakes tire noises. His W is a burp, and when he summons it all, it goes honk honk, and it's a big semi that just like <laughs> runs over everybody and smacks them. And then when he does his little like bonkety bonkety, I'm building an item thing, he gets on the CB radio and he's like, 10 4, good buddy. I need some. I need some Hell stuff. yeah. Yeah. Well, Flowers, I got some good news for you, buddy. Your dream pretty much came true. No Here shot. is the world premiere <laughs> of the new train conductor. He's Orin got a skin. train. Take a look. Give us your immediate reaction. All right, let's. Yes. <laughs> yes. Bonk it! Good job. <laughs> All right. Burp. Oh, it's like, it's like a choo choo. Chugga 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 chugga. All right. Yes, yes, giant train. Oh, I love it. Good job, Horn. Hit him with the train. Oh okay. All right. That's cool. That's cool. I don't I don't know what the portal is, but he's he's got a little train that he rides. <laughs> that was amazing. Okay. Two thumbs up. Good job, Ryan. That's like your world skin. Let's yes! It's like one worlds. I never even made it out of diamond. I never even made it to masters, and I got a world skin, baby. Let's go. There you go. This skin <laughs> and other April Fool skins are coming out on 14.7, so you can get this in April. Hell yeah! We're headed to a break. <laughs> Game yeah. is on the other yeah. side. Don't go anywhere. Yeah! Don't go anywhere. Yeah. Right, I'm you need to go down. You need to go down. You need to go down. Looks not bad. I'm fine. I'm close. Okay. Tanya, 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 Tanya. Tanya. We can go forward, we can go forward, dead. can we go forward, can we go forward? Yeah, 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 we can, we can. I can still go forward. Yeah, 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 go forward. I can still go forward, I can still go forward, I can still go forward. Go, 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 go. Don't worry, don't worry. 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 Don't Cover more ground in the Kia Sportage Turbo Hybrid. Kia, movement that inspires. Look what I've just made. The perfect pearl. Not too bad, but check this out. <laughs> Whoa, a true Venus clam. Red Bull gives you wings. The new Red Bull Sea Blue Edition with the taste of Juneberry. Wings for every taste. 